Hi, my name is Stephanie, and today I wanted to talk to you about dyspraxia, or more officially, Developmental Coordination Disorder, or DCD. For those of you who commonly watch my videos, I have put my glasses aside for now because I just cannot handle trying to figure out a way in which the glare is at least minimized. <laughs> so I'm going to be a little bit blind right now. Hopefully my eyes don't turn too much because I do have eye turns. I mean, I turn, both of my eyes turn without my permission, basically. So that's really fun. Uh, and I've noticed that when I don't wear my glasses and I record, sometimes that starts happening because I can't see clearly. So hopefully we won't have that happening. So the word dyspraxia can actually be literally broken down into difficulty with motor planning. Some people will use dyspraxia not as a word to say a diagnosis, but rather to describe having difficulty with praxis. Now, many times in this video or in other places, dyspraxia and DCD may be used interchangeably. And this is where we are implying dyspraxia as a situation where someone has met the criteria for developmental coordination disorder. Now, we had discussed briefly before about the connection between autism and dyspraxia in the video on proprioception. I decided that the topic really should have its own video because the discussion of whether dyspraxia is just kind of a super common comorbidity with autism or whether autism inherently has dyspraxic features for most people. That, that whole debate, basically, or trying to figure that out is actually uh, something that researchers have had an interesting time doing themselves. There's also an interest in how motor function can affect social abilities, which is reflected in many of the papers on dyspraxia and autism. To get started, let's go ahead and look at what the DSM-5 criteria is for someone to be considered to have DCD. A motor performance that is substantially below expected levels given the person's chronologic age and previous opportunities for skill acquisition. The poor motor performance may manifest as coordination problems, poor balance, clumsiness, dropping or bumping into things, marked delays in achieving developmental motor milestones, e.g. walking, crawling, sitting, or in the acquisition of basic motor skills, e.g. catching, throwing, kicking, running, jumping, hopping, cutting, coloring, printing, writing. B. The disturbance in Criterion A without accommodations significantly and persistently interferes with activities of daily living or academic achievement. C. Onset of symptoms is in the early developmental period. D. The motor skill deficits are not better explained by intellectual disability, intellectual development disorder, or visual impairment and are not attributable to a neurological condition affecting movement e.g. cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, degenerative disorder. The disturbance is not due to a general medical condition, e.g. cerebral palsy, hemiplegia, or muscular dystrophy. So basically, there are a lot of motor issues and they're not due to another condition such as cerebral palsy or muscular dystrophy. Additionally, dyspraxia, or of course here in our situation DCD, can really show itself differently in person to person, but generally will include sensory processing issues. And some other things that might overlap with symptoms of ADHD or autism, especially in the area of executive functioning. In this sense, some people are actually more willing to accept a diagnosis of dyspraxia over the potential diagnosis of ADHD or autism. However, these are distinct conditions and screening tools seem to be doing a fairly good job of being able to distinguish these conditions from each other in a person. Now, because many autistic people do experience motor and coordination issues, issues with balance and posture and all these things, a lot of people had kind of assumed maybe this was just a very common comorbidity with dyspraxia or DCD, rather than being an inherent part of autism. However, many others have sought to find a distinction between autism and the motor issues there and dyspraxia itself along with autism. As one paper puts it, the question of whether individuals with ASD have a discrete or comorbid ASD and DCD diagnosis has been an ongoing discussion, yet the answer is no clearer. 
Regardless, we're going to attempt to understand what researchers have been able to parse out uh, concerning these two conditions. A 2018 study looking at the similarities and differences in autism and DCD has this to say. ASC coordination difficulties are reportedly linked to visual processing impairments, whilst DCD coordination difficulties appear to be linked to spatial processing. However, auditory processing sensitivity was also defined in the ASC sensory profile as a difference between the two movement conditions. In addition to a different sensory profile, the AQ also appears to discriminate between the two conditions with excellent specificity and sensitivity. However, it is proposed that a higher cutoff point is taken into consideration for children with DCD in order to allow for co-occurring presentations in the two conditions. According to their findings, the autism coordination issues seem to be linked more to visual and auditory processing issues, whereas DCD was more linked to spatial issues. Additionally, they suggest that to diagnose ASD and DCD as comorbid conditions in a person, that the cutoff point for symptoms needed for DCD would be raised, basically. Meaning that you wouldn't necessarily just automatically diagnose someone with DCD because of their ASD coordination issues that might meet the criteria for DCD as it is. Now, another study sought to determine the differences through kinematic data. This is what they found. Our preliminary results suggest that children with ASD and DCD differ in the speed profile of their movement during a dynamic postural control task. Consistently higher accelerations in the DCD group reflected a lack of fluidity to their movements. Movement patterns observed in our DCD group seem to support the poor internal modeling hypothesis that children with DCD can produce motor plans but not effectively modify them. When tasks require rapid adaptation, slower feedback mechanisms are insufficient, and anticipatory control of COP is necessary to overcome response latency. In contrast, the ASD group had lower medial lateral accelerations, reflecting slower, more fluid patterns of movement. This is equally inefficient, but may stem from different mechanisms than those impaired in DCD. Signaling latencies in sensory networks may slow motor network signaling in ASD, rendering anticipatory and feedback mechanisms insufficient in motor plan modification. Basically, they found a difference in the speed and type of movements between those with DCD and those with ASD. Those with DCD lacked a fluidity in their movements, which they attributed to slower feedback mechanisms. In contrast, those with ASD had slower movements that were more fluid. However, as they noted, even though these were more fluid movements, they were equally as inefficient as the type of movements that the DCD individuals were making. Basically, they're thinking that these coordination issues are stemming from basically a different type of mechanism in the brain. They're hypothesizing that delays in the sensory networks are also causing delays in the motor networks when it comes to those with autism. In even simpler terms, DCD and ASD both made inefficient movements, but the qualities of those movements were different, which implies a different root cause. Now, the 2019 study that we referenced in the proprioception video found differences between the subtypes of DCD and ASD when it came to the predictive diagnostic markers that characterize subtypes of DCD. In fact, they noticed that for many variables, the ASD group did the best out of all the groups being tested, which included the ASD group and two DCD subtypes. They also noted that the ASD motor issues were specifically related to lateralization disturbances, and they find that it supports their hypothesis about issues with proprioception due to visual fixation issues. Now, another study used fMRI to be able to look at brain function while people were doing specific tasks. The results found that only the ASD group had underactivity in a part of the brain that is considered to be important for simulation, the inferior frontal gyrus, pars opercularis, or abbreviated as IFGOP, when it came to observing actions, while both the ASD and DCD groups had underactivity in the IFGOP during imitating a task. This IFGOP is a focus in the study also in part because it is involved in social cognition, emotion processing, and empathy. And the social aspect has long been of interest regarding autism research. 
This also highlights a difference between DCD and ASD, where those with ASD have difficulty with motor mirroring in observation as well, and they further note their findings to be consistent with data that suggests those with ASD have a deficit in activating chained organized motor acts both during execution and observation. They also found that the IFGOP underactivity wasn't just happening with their tests for social stimuli, which was facial expressions in this case, but also for hand actions. They go on to talk about how it looks like social and motor deficits are caused by different brain regions, and that with DCD also having atypical activity in mentalizing regions, such atypicality may not be unique to ASD. Ultimately, this study shows that there is a unique set of differences in the brain regarding activation that is separate from those with DCD. Now, I find this part particularly interesting, and maybe that's just in describing the coordination issues with autism and talking about the imitation and execution of motor tasks. And this is because something happened rather recently that kind of just highlighted my motor problems to me and everybody else in the situation. So now we're gonna have a little bit of a story time. Not too long ago, I went to an event in another state and they paid for us to go to a place called Topgolf. And basically, if you don't know what it is, I didn't know what it was at the time. It's kind of like bowling for golf. There's this huge semicircle and there are levels and there's different like lanes, I guess. And basically there's a machine that like will put your little ball out and you have different putters or what are those called? Clubs, maybe? <laughs> so, I don't play golf, I've never played golf. And it's obviously different than putt-putt or mini golf, which is what I am familiar with. And basically you put it on the little tee and you hit it and you hope it goes <laughs> you you're supposed to aim for certain areas for me i was just hoping it made it off the platform so that's kind of what was happening and i was doing my best to be a team player and a good sport even though i knew i didn't know how to do this i didn't want to be like rude supposed to be like a good networking and team building and like just a fun fun thing for us to do and I was watching I was watching everyone and I, I've seen people play golf like I get that you swing it like you swing it up here and then you go and you and you hit it and I, <laughs> I, I I've seen it I get up there and um, it didn't help though and, and this actually I think is also interesting because of the whole visual thing Basically, there's just this big open space to my left and the closed space to my right. You know, like there's a ceiling and there's like everything normal to a building here. And just right over here is just this open space. <laughs> and so I already felt like I literally felt off balance just standing where I was supposed to stand. So I was trying to like fix my balance and not freak out. And I was with some people I knew, which was good. And some people I didn't know at all. I get the golf ball out and I put it on the thing and I cannot get my arm to go past like like this far. You're supposed to like like I was trying to hit it like you would a putt-putt like <laughs> mini golf but that's not gonna go anywhere and I could not like I like my my arms my body was literally jerking trying to figure out how to do the thing that everyone else had done like I couldn't do it and it was really embarrassing I think I managed to hit the ball once or twice and I think I actually had the, the ball come out for the third one and I was trying to be a good sport. I was, because there were other people there who had never played golf either, and they were uncomfortable. And so I was just trying to be, <laughs> trying to do a good job. And and then I started having, um, I guess it's technically palilalia, um, but echolalia. Basically, I was repeating, starting to repeat to myself that I didn't, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't like this. I don't want to do this. I don't like this. Um, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't like this. Then I like, I was just like stuck. It was like my body would not do what I needed it to do. It wouldn't do it. And so I finally completely embarrassed and starting to like lose control of 
my sense of anything like balance and and coordination and obviously very embarrassed because people are waiting and I'm trying to remind myself that probably half of them aren't even paying attention because there's like snacks and stuff um, and there's like other people to talk to but that didn't work very well so I like came back and gave my uh, club to the person that I did know, one of the people that I knew, and I was pretty much done with that. You're supposed to hit five times for your turn, and I was just like, you can take my turn. I don't know what to do. They started moving on. There's a really nice lady who knew what she was doing to at least some extent, and she came over and she tried to show me how now, if you watched my video way back when, I guess it's not really way back when, it feels like it might have been a little bit way back when, where I tried y'all stims and I had a horrible time trying to follow directions. That made sense to me because like, oh, of course, like maybe I'm just reading it wrong, right? This person is literally right next to me showing me how to put your hands and I cannot like, in my brain, get it to understand how to automatically mimic what she is doing, which was embarrassing. It finally worked because she would kind of like helped me feel it, if that makes sense. And I watched her and then I tried to remember the, the feeling of it. What's weird, and if you didn't know this, what's weird about golf is that you don't go straight back. It's a weird like this movement with your, I wish I had my stand. So it's like, I can't even do it with one hand, but basically like there's like, there's like a this motion. So you, it doesn't feel right. It feels like you should take it like this, but you, you can't, you can't do that. Whatever. Anyway, so, so she was telling me how your wrist turns, yeah, yeah, your wrist turns as you go and then it comes back through and it's like, it's like a twisty thing. And so I was trying to remember to do the twisty thing because it doesn't make sense to me at all and like how you hold the pole basically and then like you're twisting, which doesn't make sense. And so I'm like trying to remember like, it's okay, it's a fluid movement. I like fluid movements, it's fine. I get up there and like every few times, like if I tried to go from swinging kind of sort of with the movement, I would lose the ability to do that. Like I would forget how I did that when trying to actually hit the ball. It was so bad guys. <laughs> Oh God, it was embarrassing. So I felt bad because this lady really was good at teaching like how to do this. And I did manage to hit the ball. Of course, I didn't manage to do the whole follow through part. Like that part couldn't, I was just like, I'll just try to at least get to the part where I have something up here and coming back down. But then of course I couldn't focus on, on trying to hit the ball at the same time as doing this. Like, what are you talking about? That's insane. So I did kind of forfeit going the rest of the time because it just wasn't fun for me. Um, but I appreciated her teaching me. What really highlighted to me, it wasn't just like, oh, you're new to this and, and that's why. It was watching her help someone because I had noticed they were bending back their wrist and they were kind of doing something similar to what I knew I was doing. And I was like, oh, can you show her the twisty thing? one time showed her one time and, and as much as I love I love you dearly if you watch this I love this person very much but I don't know that I would consider them like <laughs> what, is, what is the word I'm like I don't, I, like just someone who would just magically pick things up really fast like it's not like they're super talented and and being able to pick those sorts of things up is what I'm trying to get at here because they were also having a hard time like they were they were one above me on the list and I was at the bottom you know what I'm saying so <laughs> but the moment she showed her how to make the movement she replicated it and started succeeding like it was like oh okay you make that movement and you do it and it happens it highlighted to me that part of things because I can tell you like oh yeah it took me like three times to learn how to ride a bike but you were a kid or like I take the steps one at a time each time down but it's probably because of depth per perception issue with my eyes or that I run into doorways a lot and made a whole sort of mess in Bath and Body Works which was extremely embarrassing I like literally dumped over thank god it was just like these lightweight non-fragile things but like I misinterpreted how much room I needed to get through and just like knocked the stuff all over the place I can tell you about that but I don't do things a lot of the time that require motor movements that I haven't already learned so really seeing like it takes a lot for me to try to understand 
not only seeing what you're doing and then me repeating it and then this would happen too like with my occupational therapy assistant program I'm in we were working on doing uh, range of motion and manual muscle testing and we would work on each other as patients and when it came down to like you know like move your arm I know how to like move my whole arm right but they would say like oh move your hand or wrist a certain way because we had to test for ulnar and radial deviation I would look at their hand and confidently turn my hand the wrong way and they look at me and I look at them and then I look at my hand and I look at their hand and I'm like Something isn't working, but I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> anyway, getting back to the research on DCD and ASD, an earlier paper also mentions that it appeared that some of the motor deficits seen in ASD may not have a direct relation to social deficits. Now, the final paper that we will look at notes that having motor deficits in ASD is not the same as having DCD. As they put it, this review supported previous assertions that ASD and DCD are two distinct NDDs with clear differences in the areas of working memory ability, gestural performance, and grip selection, but with shared motor features. Now, I personally like how they kind of break this down maybe a bit differently. They point out a major difference in that those with DCD don't just have a delay in early motor skills, which may be something seen often in ASD, but also have severe problems with acquisition of later motor skills. Now, I personally don't think I have DCD, just a side note here. I think I just have the motor coordination issues that are inherent with ASD, even though that I struggle with <laughs> with learning new motor, motor patterns, they aren't maybe as drastic as I feel it would be for DCD. This also brings me back to the horrible experience of having to learn how to do coordinated, like, what is, I don't think it's really a dance. I don't know. We were singing and performing at the same time. Oh my god, that was terrible. So, like, it was clear that I had difficulty picking up things and being able to actually do what I was being taught how to do and imitate the steps and, and stuff like that. It took me a lot longer than everybody else to pick it up, but I don't think that that's necessarily what they mean here. I think I would have a lot more difficulty than just maybe a delay. That's my take. I'm not sure if I'm right on that. Now, much of the paper is concerned with the likelihood of high rates of comorbidity between ASD and DCD, which they're clear that just ASD and just DCD are different, and how undiagnosed comorbidity can cause a lack of insurance coverage and care throughout one's life because the acquisition of motor skills is constant throughout life instead of the primary delay in development that you would normally see with ASD. They also know that despite the high rates of motor issues in autistic people, few are identified and most effort goes into helping with social matters while ignoring motor deficits in regard to therapies prescribed and and paid for through insurance. They conclude that the potential for undiagnosed co-occurrence of DCD among children and adolescents with ASD is high, poorly recognized, and clinically significant, with over 76% of their cases meeting all the criteria necessary to be diagnosed with DCD and over 90% of them meeting at least both of the first and second major criteria. So in conclusion, research does show that ASD and DCD are separate things, but that there can be comorbidity. ASD does typically have a high rate of motor deficits, doesn't necessarily mean that it meets the criteria for DCD. I do agree with the paper that suggested that the amount of criteria be raised for a comorbidity diagnosis between ASD and DCD. We see that autism motor deficits and DCD motor deficits look different in kinematics and brain imaging. And this isn't just because it's related to somehow to social issues, which some of the papers were focused on trying to see if maybe that was a correlate or a reason why maybe the motor motor issues in ASD was also an issue with the core social um, problems that ASD people experience, but it doesn't just apply to social situations. Basically, they're different conditions, but they can look a lot alike, but likely have different mechanisms causing 
the deficits and also there can be a comorbidity of both in one individual. I also agree that it is important to be able to diagnose people properly so that they have the right supports in place and that people who might have serious issues acquiring new motor skills throughout their life have the appropriate help instead of just constantly working on their social skills and ignoring very real issues in motor uh, areas. So I hope that this video has helped a little bit in explaining the differences and I guess similarities of autism and its motor deficits and DCD or dyspraxia and that whole conversation there. If you found this video useful, helpful, interesting, entertaining, or whatever else in any way, you can go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and let me know your thoughts about this in the comments below. If you can relate to any of these things, if you are familiar with both of these conditions and if you have both or one or anything like that, feel free to share in the comments. If you are interested in autism related videos from me, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to upload every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. I have been trying to do live streams the last Thursday of the month, but that will not be happening during the holiday months. Thank you to everyone who supports me here on YouTube as YouTube channel members, through Ko-fi, and as patrons on Patreon. And a special thank you to my spinny stimmy tier patrons, Jack Varney and Philip Noah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.